Niagara College, principles of marketing. Here's our stand. Real world tools, advice, principles from real world people. And textbooks are great. You know, we're, we're working off a textbook. It's behind me somewhere. It's this big, thick thing. And it's, it's okay. It's as much fun as a tax seminar some days. But the textbook's good. Like the textbook is, here's the principles of marketing and what you need to know. And students love it, right? They're like, yeah, okay. Well, I'm saying they love it. They probably don't. Uh, but it's this. It's this these students love. So this is like a series uh, for our asynchronous classes in the college to actually highlight real world speakers with real world knowledge. So as soon as I started to plot these speakers out, there was kind of somebody on my mind and she's like above here right now, like she's in the other room. And uh, this person uh, is pretty close to me and my business and our family. And uh, she owns my new book. So I have to be really, really nice because she could just say, I'm sorry, we lost the files. And I would be like crushed. But joining us today, uh, one of the owners of Onera Media right here in Niagara, like right here in Niagara, uh, is Brandy Henderson. And Brandy, you and I have known each other for for years, I think like we were like teenagers, <laughs> right? But so we've known each other for for a lo long time, and uh, I've always admired all the work that you've done, uh, you and your partner Ro, and the whole team in Onera Media. And I thought where we would start today is, uh, you know, we've got eighty students wondering what you do, and uh, this is probably a great place to start. So Brandy, like, take us through your background, take us through what Onera is. Start with I was but a child. But t like, take us through uh, a a your background and then ultimately Onera Media. Go nuts. Okay, for sure. Well, thank you for <laughs> thank you for having me uh, here, and hello to everybody in the class. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, I have a um, pretty extensive corporate career, as uh, many folks my age tend to. Um, I actually worked in the BPO um, third party outsourcing industry for 16 or so years. I grew up in the industry. Wow. I had the pleasure of traveling the world, opening up um, call centers all over the world. Uh, a lot of travel, got to see the world, uh, which was great. Um, I loved what I did 100%. Um, but I met someone, uh, her name is Ro, one day. I was um, in the process of building my family and um, I, was, uh, I had just actually had a baby girl, her name is Ella. And um, I wasn't necessarily so excited about maintaining that high paced corporate environment and was really looking at things to do to fuel my own passions, things yeah. to do um, that I was really excited about. And Ro and I met at a networking event here in Niagara Falls. It was actually at Doc McGilligan's, believe it or not. And she shared uh, quite a bit of information with me in regards to things she was working on. She was also uh, ha having her corporate career. She's doing really, really well, very, very successful, but looking for something more, looking to execute uh -huh. for something more. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, her career kind of took her all around the world as well, far more in any capacity than I uh, I had traveled. She worked in the airlines for about 20 years or so oh, wow. for Air Canada, traveling the world. Um, she's been literally about everywhere. We have this map behind me, actually. We've been okay, all the it? places that she's been. Um, it's it's pretty impressive. But she she's very, very experienced in marketing space. And um, both of our experiences traveling the world, there's so many things about beautiful places all around the globe um, you think of like the Taj Mahal, you think of Paris, you think of all these beautiful, stunning places. You don't necessarily think of Niagara at the same caliber, although Niagara is 100% to anybody that's lived here long enough and explored outside of, you know, the falls or that area. It's incredibly stunning, incredibly beautiful, not necessarily marketed as powerful as it should be. Oh. Um, we decided to start Onera Media to exploit that in a powerful way to really market Niagara for, uh, to do its justice, if, if I may, to, to really do this place justice for what we offer um, as a region, to what we offer tourists, to what we offer residents. Um, it's just a beautiful place. We started as a publishing and marketing company. We launched our brand of magazines, Reveal Magazines, oh, and wow. 
The magazine readership grew in print and digital to readership in 103 countries. Very, very powerful medium as far as marketing and publishing goes. And we've been doing this for five years now. We've grown to a full service, full service firm. Um, we do everything from publishing, which is our roots, um, in the magazines, in books. Neil, we're so happy to be publishing your 394 page <laughs> book on leadership, which is excellent. Um, so more on that as that comes to launch to the public. But yeah, so five years of marketing, publishing, branding, um, all sorts of strategy, web development, full digital development, database development. If it has to do with marketing, branding, communication, PR and communications, we have a full uh, suite of services in that space. Yeah. NARA handles it. We have 21 people on our team today. Oh, great, good, congratulations. Headquarters are in Niagara. Our headquarters will remain in Niagara, although we do serve clients internationally. We run digital campaigns in the UK, Latin America, uh, all over the province of Ontario. Um, yeah, we just, we absolutely love what we do. And not only because we get to help people in business and marketing, um, but we also get to nerd out with data and statistics and measurables and analytics. Yeah. Um, Ro has some background in finance uh, accounting. I have background in finance um, from my call center uh, days. You know, you run a BPO, you have to be fiscally responsible. Yeah. Um, so we just, we love what we do from every, every end of the spectrum. Wow. The nitty gritty stuff, the people stuff, the networking stuff. Um, we're very blessed. Super Did you blessed. guys start out with that full suite of services uh, or was it, you know, we want to start with the magazine world and get into maybe some graphic design. And like, how did it evolve to where it is today? How long did it take you guys to evolve that? We were pretty strategic about how we wanted to launch. We knew in the beginning that we weren't going to stay with only the publication. We had Onera Group is our overall entity. And there's three companies underneath Onera Group. So we have Onera Media, Onera Tech, and Onera Access. So the media component by design would start with the publication, move into the digital space. And as we built our footing in that space, then offer the digital services that we ourselves use to market our own publication, our own products, yeah. start marketing those out to the general public, uh, and then grow from there, which we did. Onera Tech it is the entity that handles any of our immersive and collaborative technology space. It's also the entity responsible for any web development or CRM development, anything like that. Wow. We did a project for the town of Lincoln last year that was completely immersive, projection mapping installations. Um, it had app development component on the social scavenger side. It was really, really powerful, um, very multi-layered. So Onera Tech administers those components. And then access is where we handle a lot of our consultative work. Um, and that's going to grow as well in different areas in the next two years. Wow. We got a lot of stuff up our pipe or yeah. up our sleeve. Yeah. Um, yeah. But everything is just, is very, very strategic as we kind of layer along, right? It's like that diversified offer that you're like a one-stop shop. And, and that's what I've heard with some marketing firms is, oh, they're really good at this, but they're not good here. Where do I go to get this? I kind of know them to do that. I've always seen Onera as like that full suite yeah. of everything from A to Z, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So Brandy, in, like in your business, this is probably like preaching to the choir, but like, what is, what is the importance of marketing? What do you see as the importance of marketing the role it plays in your business, not only for you guys as an organization, but for your clients as well, and the people who you're publishing books for. <laughs> <laughs> you're fun. <laughs> uh, marketing is marketing is almost it's non negotiable. If if you're, it's a good point. It really is. It's it's vital. It's just like you wouldn't you wouldn't consider proceeding without air or without, you know, your heart beating, you know, it, it's vital. Uh, if you're going to grow, there's, um, Ro has a really, it, it, she has a really powerful way of putting it to the 10th power. So here, I'll go through the list. See if I'm, if I know it properly. Okay. So remember, to, remember to take your time because some students may be quizzed on this. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> These are 10 very critical components. So okay, feel free components. to take them down, okay? <laughs> to be known, 
to be accessible, to be protective, to be innovative, to be nurturing, to be informative, to be collaborative, to be relevant, to be effective, and to be sustainable. Oh my God, do you have like that as a tattoo somewhere? Like, how'd you remember all that? I uh, quizzed myself <laughs> as well. And it's just, it's, it's what we do, right? These are, it's like a check and balance. Every, every strategy that we deploy, whether it's for ourselves, uh, whether it's for a client, whether it's for a project, we go through these, these questions, right? Wow. What are we doing? What's the purpose? Do well, we check all these boxes? Yeah. So let me, let, me hold, let me hold that spot. So each student, this term, is going to do a marketing plan, mm -hmm. including all of the components of the principles of marketing that we've studied up to this point and beyond. So for example, Hugo, our first speaker, talked a lot about the SWOT analysis. Uh, yep. Michelle Kahn from Form and Effect, she talked about, well, personally, an imposter syndrome, which we all have, but then KPIs and measurements, everything they do. Mm -hmm. So those 10 components you just gave me, that those components may be nice overlays into a marketing plan. So mm -hmm. give, give, me, give me the 10 components again as if a student was writing them. So what, just give us the 10 again, fire it off. <laughs> to be known, to be accessible, accessible, to be protective, to be innovative, nurturing, informative, collaborative, relevant, effective, sustainable. Oh my God, that was so cool. I didn't hear wine in there at all. So I'm... <laughs> Oh, that comes after. <laughs> <laughs> and 10.5 wine. Okay. Uh, man. So, so how, how do, are they like your core values? Like every, every client, every decision you make meets one or a number of those criteria or all of them? It, you have to tie it back to your purpose. And that purpose is, it changes depending on the who, the what, the where, the when, right? You go through that. You talk about being protective, for example, you've got to be aware of your your surroundings, your brand sentiments, how your external positioning is, what is the voice of your brand if you were to ask someone that doesn't work for your company, right? It's a process that you go through and evaluate each of those components. Sometimes Ro and I will go through that process before we deploy a strategy. We'll go through that process again of asking us asking those questions after we deploy a strategy. Yeah. Where we was what we thought what occurred and if not then where do we adjust wow but it's it's very reflective and you you talk about those a lot of reflective questions in your book when you're talking about leadership and positioning your influence right how do you make sure it, it's same thing yeah so critical so critical yeah and all the body language stuff which is so awesome <laughs> it is very People awesome. love that stuff right the, People, all the uh, yeah well, it, it's true because, you know, you just said earlier, you know, the voice of your brand mm -hmm. conversations I'm having with very senior people is, Hey, I, I've read all the books. Like I, I don't need another training class. We, we've got it all. Right. And I came from Carnegie. Man. I, I, we started training. Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, would you like to know how to read a room? Like, I mean, really read a room, nonverbals, comfort, discomfort cues, the stuff that's not being said. And people like, they lean up like, what? Right. I said, when you walked in the room today, I, I noticed your team gave you four nonverbal cues. You might want to be aware of those, but you were just busy splaying on a chair. Like you, you were right. trying to own the room. You, you weren't reading the cues that were being fired at you. I, I wonder if you're like that with your customers. That gets attention. Right. So well, think, and there's so much power in that. Right. Yeah. And I think marketing is about getting attention. So if you if you look at Onera Media, like Onera as a whole, as an organization and all the components to it, what are some strategies or ways that you guys apply marketing uh, for your own business? So we uh, it's kind of a loaded question because we live and breathe marketing. Right. So every every <laughs> everything that we do. Um, is, is very strategic when we talk marketing, advertising, campaigning, communication, um, sentiments, tone, where we choose to be 
viewed, where we choose to be seen, where and we and we have to do all of that while also maintaining, you know, an apolitical stance, very neutral, but pushing conversation. Ro and I are so passionate about pushing conversation to share different vantage points because that's so important for people to. There's no, there's so many conversations out there that are considered. Um, you know, conflicting or challenging, or, you right. know, sometimes right. being able to just to approach a conversation that may be um, controversial, but to look at it from a neutral perspective to allow multiple vantage points and viewpoints to be considered. That's how we move forward. That's how we evolve. That's how we deploy the right strategies for the right situation. Wow. Um, you have to have that neutrality present in most things. So when we talk about strategies and marketing for our business, there's a lot more detail than how we sometimes approach a not a media company, right? Because we have all that additional layer that we have to take into, into yeah. account. And um, much easier said than done. Yeah, but it's awareness and it's constantly like Ro and I every day checking in on what are we doing? Where are we at? What conversations are going on out there? Where, where are we present? Where are we not present? Where are we lacking presence um relevance right relevance and 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 that strategy but when we're talking strategies about clients i mean we handle everything from publishing to everything right so the strategy really depends upon the purpose of of that brand that we're working with yeah uh, and there's short term there's long term right and there's everything in between so we really dig in we don't do anything cookie cutter uh, we're very personalized. Yeah. We ask so many questions, um, you know, and we vet the people that we work with to a, to a degree. I think Ro would agree with me when we say we, the people that we work with, we choose to work with because they understand the intricacies of the process to do the right thing, to market right. their business or to strategize the right way. Yeah. There needs to be a purpose. So, I mean, can we just run a digital campaign? Sure, we can just run a digital campaign. Do we want to just run a digital campaign? No. What's the point? What are we trying to achieve? What do you want at the end of the campaign? What do you want the people that are viewing that campaign to feel, to think, to do, right? So we we get into details with people, right? Who are you? What's yeah. your brand? What does it represent? What do you think it represents and what does it actually represent? Some of the tools that we have for media um, communications, measuring sent sentiments, they tell you some really crazy stuff. They're very, very powerful, but yeah. it also gives you that check and balance so that you know is what you're about to do strategically make sense to your end game, to your goals, to your business plan. Wow. And then based on that, probably any strategy you put forth, you know, the, the question comes up of measurement. Like how, how do we measure the success of a campaign? How do we measure the success of marketing, which is probably inclusive of digital and traditional media styles? Mm -hmm. What, how, Brandy, how, how do you kind of determine objectives with a client? And then mm -hmm. also, how do you communicate and measure those feedback loops and measurements of this to determine the success of it? How do you guys do that? So depending on what you're working on, so, and obviously from a measurement perspective, we're talking about short term, you know, are we talking about a specific campaign, specific, specific advertising sector? Uh, a communication strategy, um, you set your goals and your metrics beforehand, right? What's the outcome of the campaign? If we're talking about a digital campaign, we can say, okay, let's say we're going to run a six month campaign that is specific to promoting an event. So the outcome of that campaign, are we looking for people to sign up for the event, to purchase tickets, to just yeah. be aware of the event? You know, are we, there's goals, there's campaign goals. Yeah. Then there's corresponding measurements and stats. Are we looking at click-through rate? Are we looking at conversion rate? Are we looking at impression delivery? All of that stuff is organized before anything goes live, right? Okay. To make sure that the, that the goals and line up with the purpose and we make recommendations all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. And then depending on those goals, you have your, the different ways to measure, right? In, in the digital sense, we have all the analytics at our disposal. Ro and I are so transparent with all of the analytics in any campaign that we run, any investment that we do, give you all your data. Why not? It's there. Um, yeah. With more traditional pieces of media or advertising, it's all about the standard industry-led metrics and, and 
measurement points, the verification points, right? right. Uh, old school print would be what is the readers per copy when you do an audit, right? What is your circulation? What is your, um, how do you how do you measure and verify the circulation occurred as intended? All those right. checks and balances, right? right. Um, but the most important thing from a long-term perspective is your brand equity, right? What's the, what's the viability of your business, your brand, your product, your service over the long-term? And you call what's it brand, the, brand equity? Yeah. Like what is the market? The market responds to your brand how? How does the public feel about your product and service? What's your, what's your customer acquisition rate? And what's your return rate? Do you measure those things? Because those things tell you truly how successful your marketing efforts are over time. So why do, why do not a lot of people do it? Like why do most companies are, I don't know, just, just, I just hired some young social media person. I let them go. Like, they, we, don't put a lot of, we don't put a lot of focus on this stuff. At least, at least local companies that I talk to. Well, why is it not important? It's, it takes a lot of time, takes, it takes a lot of attention. Yeah. Ro and I, Ro and I care a lot about what we do, right? When we, when we say that we are excited to work with someone, we mean it. It's because we've already connected. We have already talked about, you know, your brand, your goals, your business. We're excited about what you do. We feel as though we can comfortably refer your brand, your product, your company, because we believe in what you do. We believe in you, yeah. right? Yeah. And marketing that and caring about it and doing that work, it's, it, it's, it's a process, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we have, we have backgrounds in, in a lot of that stuff process. Like I did Lean Six Sigma for how long, right? It was a requirement of many of the roles that I had in my previous company. Yeah. You just, you're very, very systematic. We're very analytical with purpose. Right. Everything has to have a purpose. If it doesn't have a purpose, why do it? Yeah. And if it doesn't have a purpose, we're not going to recommend that you do it or that you invest in it. Why would you? Yeah, that's good right? advice. That's good advice. And then, you know, there's, there's resource, there's resource challenges and constraints. Ro and I invested a lot in um, industry led software, um, international, like the PR tools that we have are internationally recognized and they have global access. Wow. So we can, we can take our expertise and our passion for that individual, the, the individual, uh, how am I trying to describe it? The personalized approach to client management, we can exponentially apply because we leverage and invest in tools and resources, right? So her and I never lose that, that personal touch with, every, with everybody that we work with because in the back end, we're powered with machine learning, AI software, all this kind of stuff that a lot of the larger agencies like Toronto and Montreal and all these folks, they have access to. Right. Um, so do we. You put Niagara on the map. We, we are on the map. <laughs> so, you know, here, here's, here's a question. Um, you know, people watching this, really, it's for a Niagara College class. So these, <laughs> these are people that are choosing to take a general business course. Marketing is part of it. They're going to take accounting. They, they'd rather stab themselves in the face than take accounting classes. But I still, You won't regret it. You won't regret it. I think it's the best class they'll take. But, you know, here we've got, you know, stu younger students, maybe a few older mature students, or even some people watching this that are like, you know, I, I, I'd like to get some advice. Like, I, I'd like to have some advice from a real marketer. What, what would you say to a student or someone getting into marketing? What, what direction or roadmap would you give them? What would you want them to read? Uh, what's your recommended wine pairing? I don't know. Like, what, 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 advice, what advice would you give students? Okay, this is probably going to sound cliche, but honestly, Neil, I think the most important thing is you have to absolutely be authentic, especially if you're going to get into marketing, you need to be, you need to be honest and authentic. What does that look like? To yourself, be authentic to yourself and who you are, your values, your personal experiences, your personal backgrounds, cultures, et cetera. They are so important. 
never lose sight of them. They always need to be there. Yeah. They will, they will drive you and guide you. Right. But the authenticity in marketing, it has, you, you can't, you can't jeopardize that. You, you cannot, you know, you cannot compensate that for yourself because you have to be genuine about helping that business succeed. This marketing is a huge investment. It's vital, it's required, but it is also a large investment of people's time. If you do it right, of their heart, sharing with you what their vision for their company or their product or their service is, that's the heartbeat of their operation and what they work for. You have to treat that with the respect that it deserves, mm. right? And to take, to take that investment, that trust, that faith that they put in you, to guide that strategy, to recommend the right thing for their goals. Wow. Right? Not promising, it's their goal, their goal is to achieve, right? Marketing is, is a tool, um, but you, ha you have to be authentic in your approach. You have to care. You have to stay true to that. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of it is intention and attitude as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, are you trained to be a marketer? I don't know, are you trained to be an extrovert? Well, right. In the class this week, we had an assignment, you know, just do an environmental scan on a small local business. And uh, students are doing well. You know, I'm getting Word documents, you know, Word document Times New Roman is about as exciting as a tax seminar. I was like, awful. As a few PowerPoints come in, I just got one today. Uh, just the best student, she did a video. And, and I'm just, you know, and, and the video is a bit of a slide, a bit of like a slide format, but there's music to it. There's, and, and there's photos of her in the store. And it's, it's a Latino store in St. Catherine. So I don't even know about this place. I'm going to go check it out because of this video. It looked really cool. Nice. But, you know, it's a picture of her in the aisleway and outside and holding stuff. And I'm just thinking that's someone who, who takes this serious. Mm -hmm. And it's someone who also had fun doing it you could tell like she's like, hey, yeah. smiling and stuff and the students are like oh, i got this assignment to do you're not going to do well in marketing no like go take a logistics course and go work <laughs> for walmart right yeah that's, that's where you're headed if you if you want to be like an, an introverted logistics person but if you want to be yeah. in marketing and and I've, I've told the students this term too and I, i'd like to expose you to more of the students is guys it better get used to doing video you guys have yeah. to get used to being on stage because that's our future. Yeah. Wow. People, right? You have you have to have a love for people because that you're that's what you're doing. You are connecting with people every minute of every day. Even even when you're not on camera, you're working on a proposal or you're drafting out a strat plan. Whatever you're doing, it all ties back to helping a person you're with one of their most stage. personal things. Yeah. I've often said everyone's in sales because sales is the transference of confidence mm -hmm. and you're selling yourself and your ideas every day. Yeah. So Brandy, this is pure gold. So how can the students connect with you guys? What's your website? What, how, how, how can they connect with you guys? Come and visit you, bring you like coffee and donuts <laughs> and stuff. How, like how do, how do, how do they connect with you guys? So online, our website is uh, oneramedia.com. So O-W-N-E-R-I-A media.com. Did I spell that right? <laughs> and uh, you can also revealmags.com. Yeah. That's where all of our magazines are housed, which is awesome. Anybody, anytime can email me, brandy at oneragroup.com. Yeah. Anytime. And we are, our head office is right here in Niagara Falls. Right, We're on Portage Road. Yeah, we would love to have anybody by. We we work with students from Niagara College. We work with students from Brock. We work with students from A. N. Meyer right across the street. So we've got you know great student reputation. We love we absolutely love working with different education institutes. Yeah. Our door is always open. Wow. Not because of COVID appointment only, but you could ring the doorbell. <laughs> Wear a mask. Yeah. yeah, email me. We can make an appointment. We love to connect with community. If there's anything that we can do to help, we're here. All right. Um, on behalf of Niagara College, Principles Marketing, 1301. Uh, you rock, Brandy. Hold on tight. I'm just going to stop the recording. But thanks for your time. Thank you.